Mark, maybe you could just give us a little introduction to yourself and what it is that you do at Aston Martin, please. Yes, I am um, have a grandiose title of, of Executive Vice President and Chief Creative Officer, but what it actually means is I'm the designer, so and I've been designing Aston Martins and anything associated with the brand in terms of look and feel for 15 years, or probably slightly more than 15 years now, but my daily job is to think about the future of, of automotive design with respect to Aston Martin, think of our future products, think of the future car line, um, where the brand's going in terms of its look and feel, and obviously one of the most brilliant parts of that is that we've had a long-standing relationship with James Bond, the franchise, Eon, and, and the movies, and actually the fir one of the first jobs when I joined Aston Martin was was to um, design the DBS that obviously went into Casino Royale. Oh wow, okay, that's amazing. So you've had a long, you've been with Aston Martin a long time, but also been working alongside the Bond franchise for a long time. So maybe you can just talk about that relationship, how that kind of came to pass. Did they call you? Do you call them? How does this relationship become what it is today? Yeah, I think it's. Um, we call each other because it, it is, as you describe it, it's a relationship. And I think, you know, Barbara Broccoli, Michael Wilson, have, uh, it, we're on the roller decks when they start thinking about the new movie. It's, it's a conversation we have. And the way it's worked thus far, and I'm sure it won't change, is that um, Barbara, Michael, and previously Daniel have been up to the studio to see what we've been doing. So I allow them into, into my studio space to see the future. And I always make a joke when I take anyone in there that you know, we, we only let James Bond in here normally, so <laughs> royalty and James Bond. Um, and they come and look at what we have in store and in plan for the future and decide whether it's appropriate for the movie, if we need to do something special um, to continue the relationship. And, you know, uh, we've had some amazing times throughout that, you know. DBS obviously for, for Daniel Craig in Casino Royale, then Quantum of Solace, Sam Mendes wanting to create a unique car, which was the first time ever for James Bond in, in Spectre and doing the DB10, which only 10 cars made and we actually gave the moniker db10 to that car because obviously we went db9 to db11 yep. so the db10 is yep. is officially james bond's car right. and um so that kind of gives you an, an idea of how close and and how we value the relationship the, the other important factor to say is that you know i think heroes the the Aston Martin and James Bond movies has become a hero and, and for me that was all brought home when Sam Mendes introduced the cast um, for Spectre and the first cast member he introduced was DB10 and that's how he introduced DB10 on stage before anyone else so I think it, it kind of gives you an idea of, of how um, really James Bond can't do his job without an Aston Martin <laughs> It is his go-to car uh, so we're here at Battersea today outside the power station and we've just unveiled one of the continuations for the DB5s in the box so people can come down and see it here. It's down at the Jetty Pier. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. So this is one of the continuations of 25 that were built for private customers, I believe. Um, so do you put the feelers out to your customers first and say, look, uh, we can do this project if we've got an appetite for it? Maybe you can just talk about that, please. Yeah, I think what we typically would do is was talk to our customers know what's happening know what celebrations or milestones are happening in in the future and obviously this year we celebrate 50 years of of that relationship and you know one of the first quest we'd done other continuation cars and you know customers say well what about the db5 so we we decided to make the db5 continuation car more special and actually recreate the bond car and do 25 editions of of the bond car they are not road legal cars they're track only cars so you are you're looking for collectors or serious collectors who want something completely unique and and once the 25 are sold that's it they will never be repeated and i think therefore you have a highly collectible car and if you are both Aston Martin collector and Bond memorabilia collector, then you know this is this is the perfect car for you. And with this being such a success, of each of these cars being sold, 
Actually, sorry, let me backpedal a sec. So, out of the 25, is one of those in the box right now down at Battersea? One of the 25 is in the box right, right now. Yeah. Okay. So, it's, it's not just a toy. The, the box itself is, call it a, a living garage. It's, it's going to protect the car. It's going to be outside for four weeks. Um, and inside is, is a real car. It's a car that we could drop the back of the box, reverse it out, and drive it round. <laughs> Um, and, and it's got all the gadgets in it. So the, the bulletproof shield, there's a removable roof panel, no ejector seat, but the panel comes out. It has the tracking system in the center console. It's got the, the flip up switch on the, on the gear shifter. It has the smoke trails, oil trails, the tire slashers, um, rotating revolving number plates, obviously. So it, it, it's got all the gadgets. So I read that the bullet shield had to be inserted separately and then, so sorry for the gold finger, the bullet shield had to be inserted separately and then once we needed to get the oil slicks out then we take the bullet shield out and the oil slicks go in so there's kind of a little bit of chopping and changing. How have you managed to get everything in and oh, lastly the, uh, the kind of tyre splitting axles that come out of the wheels, so they were done in close ups and edits, are, are they involved as well? Yeah, so that they, we re-engineered the, the the car effectively when the original Goldfinger car and all of its gadgets were made. It, it was made as a movie car, yeah. so it, it really had to do maybe 10, 15, 20 days of filming. And in this instance, we've engineered the car for the period of its life, so as long as someone collect, keeps it. And so all of the gadgets have been engineered to last, to be usable, um, for, for the com- for the customer, and we engineered and, and repackaged the bullet shield and the oil container and the smoke container as well, so that right. everything works. The tire slashers come as a separate um, item that you you order and then you can fit. Right. So obviously, to drive round with them always out is uh, going to be a little <laughs> bit dangerous, it's even for a track-based car. <laughs> so it's um, it's something that that you do specially fit. But they will go on there, and and I presume they would work. And with this being such a success, as in nearly all 25 being sold, how close are we to saying, right, let's find another 25? Uh, we'd never do that. No. No. So this gives it its exclusivity. And yeah. 25 was the number and 25 it will be okay um there's also been a excuse me i've got one hand on my dog and one hand on the dictaphone so so, so it's quick thank you grace thanks so um, i want to before i touch upon the matera and the, and the cars out there in no time to die maybe you can just talk a little bit about the the aston martin that was stolen in Florida back in the day. And there's been a recent uh, podcast episode on the Spyscape that people can listen to as well. So it's all quite fascinating. But how much do you know about this? As, not as in where's the car, but how much has this been associated with you and Aston Martin? Um, well, you know, I, I know as much as I know from our ec- internal experts. And obviously, as you would imagine, from... Uh, recognizing the car understanding the car and and the kind of chronology of which car what number where what distinguishing marks it has we've got the experts and we have a an inter well we 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 will we'll always want to verify so obviously you know come and ask aston martin whether it is the actual car because we we know and and therefore um we have as many tales out in the marketplace uh, and, and the world looking and, and seeing as, as anyone would. And we've got the experts that it's surprising, you know, just looking at 100 meters can probably tell you because of some nuance that's there that doesn't exist on, on other cars. Because they found the bullet car not too long ago, right? That was in a, the old Mustang was in a dump yard somewhere all covered in rust and someone went and got the serial marker and said well the, we now have the bullet car so I kind of have these I don't know if it's faint optimism that one day this is just going to turn up somebody's not going to know they have it in their garage or they're going to have it in their dump yard do you think that's ever going to be happening in our lifetime I, I think someone knows where it is and whose it is okay so. <laughs> <laughs> um, lastly we'll, we'll just go into no time to die so but there are 15 cars that were used, or 15 chassis that were used for No Time to Die that were flown out to Matera for the DB5. Uh, can you talk about what was underneath, as in what is Aston Martin, what is kind of 
uh, 3D printed Justin Martin. <laughs> Just a little bit of that. All of the stunt cars were obviously built to really to, to ensure the safety of the stunt drivers. So and and they have to do some incredible stunts. They jump. They they do donuts. They do full on drifts. They're slamming into things. So they had to be built an incredibly robust way. And you wouldn't use an original DB5 to do any of that. Um, to be fair, so they are exact visual copies. So the the look of the car, even the feel of of the chrome work, etc., etc., is exactly as you'd find it. But underneath that look and feel surface is a carbon fiber um, body over a what's called a space frame chassis. So it's a very lightweight chassis that incorporates the roll cage and the safety systems for for the driver. And so, you know, all of that was engineered by Aston Martin and, right. and the technicians within Aston Martin Lagonda and Newport Pagnell, our work service div division. So I in theory, they are re-engineered DB5s, totally engineered and manufactured and built by Aston Martin, but they have nothing in common with the original DB5 ap apart from the way they look. And we have the return of the V8, my personal favourite Aston Martin. Uh, I believe it's Chris... Bolt's favourite Aston Martin as well and Daniel Craig's um, what is it about the V8 that you think resonates with everybody within the industry here? Well, I think it's, it's probably also one of Kerry's favourite cars as well, Kerry Fukunaga who's the, the director obviously I think you know what resonates it, it, it's something fresh, it's something different to the DB5 it is still classic and it's incredibly powerful, it's an incredibly not just powerful in terms of its, its horsepower but it's a powerful image that the car has. It has very broad shoulders. It's, it, you know, it takes a lot of inspiration, or it did take inspiration in, in the day um, from, from Americana and the muscle cars of that period. And you can, you can clearly see it. So if you, if you like, it's um, the first true brute in a suit. Um, <laughs> and you know, I think that's why it, it just, it looks the part. It is, it's just got a beautiful, like you say, it's got that, masculinity the muscle yeah. the kind of it, it looks like it can take someone on <laughs> um, but still has that you know beautiful elegance to it which i think everyone recognizes instantly when it comes on yeah. screen um Mark, thanks so much what happens to the cars afterwards maybe this might be a question for meg but when the cars kind of go on screen and off screen do they go into the bond archives or do they come back to newport pagnell or where, what happens to them Typically, there is um, a, a little bit of a, a part share, as it were. So we get some of the original cars, and then the Eon franchise gets some. And some of them are taken out on their um, their, their road shows, etc. But we would typically keep some of the cars, and Eon will keep some of the cars as well. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll look at for them in the Sotheby's auction at some point. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Merrick, thanks so much for your time. And You're welcome. Congratulations on the, the event here and for being in No Time Today. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you.